Hi everybody, welcome to this video entitled Raspberry Pi Pico in C, C++, PWM and ADC. This is the outline of this presentation. We will see first an introduction, then we will show a PWM example, an ADC example and a combined example of PWM and ADC. Here we have some relevant videos on this topic, Digital Electronics number 7, Introduction to Raspberry Pi Pico Microcontroller Board, Digital Electronics number 9, How to connect an LCD to a Raspberry Pi Pico via I2C bus, and Digital Electronics number 11, how to program a Raspberry Pi Pico in C, C++. This one is especially interesting because today we are going to continue with the programming of the Raspberry Pi Pico in C, C++. In this previous video, QSpice number 3, we presented how to digitally control a back converter in closed loop. We did this simulation in QSpice with this module that includes a program in C, C++ to do the, the control of the converter in closed loop. So in this video today we are going to see how to use the Raspberry Pi Pico to implement the two basic functions that we need to do the control of a converter. So as we see here we need to measure the output voltage and send the output voltage to our microcontroller. So we need an ADC converter, an analog to digital converter. And also we need to generate the PWM signal to drive the switch. So we need also to know how to do this generation of the PWM signal from the microcontroller. So today we are going to see how to do this by using the Raspberry Pi Pico in C, C++. As we said in previous video, we prefer using C, C++ because it's going to run much faster in the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller than when using MicroPython. So let's do it. So here we have the schematic of the PWM block obtained from the data sheet. So we have first an event selector, then a divider, the counter, and then we have two outputs in each PWM block. In the data sheet they talk about slice, so this schematic corresponds to one slice. And here we have the two outputs and then another output for an interruption. And here below we have the waveforms. In the default mode we have the ramp which is generated by the counter. And then there is a comparison with a given value and then we obtain the PWM waveform at the output of the module. This is the default mode, but we have another mode which is called in the datasheet the phase correction. And in this case we have a double ramp and then the PWM signal is generated in this way by a comparison with a given value in a similar way. Today we are going to focus on this mode which is the default mode. So we have the typical ramp, as we have seen many times in previous videos, and then we will be generating a PWM signal with a variable duty cycle and a variable frequency. A very important element in the PWM module is the clock divider, because with this we can adjust the frequency of the PWM signal. So as we can read in the information, each slice has a fractional clock divider configured by the div register, which is an 8 integer bit for fractional bit clock divider. So is very flexible. And with this we can reduce the count rate by a factor of 256. And even with this clock divider we can get frequencies as low as 7.5 Hz from the main system clock, which is 125 MHz. So here we have some examples, for example, for the integer part of the div register equal to 1 and the fractional part equal to 0. 
the counter enable signal is always equal to 1, so we will have a clock equal to the main clock, 125 MHz. If we select 3 for the integer part and 0 for the fractional part, then we will have a signal like this. So we have a pulse every 3 pulses of the main clock, and then we have other possibilities and combinations, but today we are not going into all the details, of course, we are only interested in generating a basic PWM signal for our DC-DC converter. So for more information, you can go to the microcontroller data sheet, which is this document available from the internet, and in section 4.5 you have all the information. And other very important information that we need to program the microcontroller is in this document PICO C, C++, SDK, Libraries and Tools for C, C++ Development on RP2040 Microcontrollers. Here if we go to this section, Hardware PWM, then we will find all the information related to the APIs for programming the PWM. So we have here some of these functions. Today we are going to use the functions that are highlighted here, the setting of the clock divider, the setting of the wrapping, so this is to set the frequency, the set channel level to set the on time, the duty cycle at the end, and then the enable of the slice of the PWM module that we are using. And here we have an example of a PWM program. We are going to use our Raspberry Pi Pico using the channels GP0 and GP1. So these are the two pins that we are going to use to generate two PWM signals. And in this part we have the program. So here first in these lines what we are doing is to turn the onboard LED. So we can see that the board is correctly supplied. Then here in, on these lines we are setting the GP0 and GP1 to become PWM outputs. Here we are finding out which is the number of the slice corresponding to GP0. In this case is the slice number 0, but in other cases maybe we need to do this to be sure that we are using the correct slide. And then we will use this variable slice number in order to uh, program all the necessary variables for our PWM module. For example, here on this line, we are setting to 1 the clock divider, so the frequency is going to be the same as the main system frequency. Then here we are setting the period to 1250. And why are we using this value of the period? This is because if we divide 125 MHz by 100 kHz, well, then we get 1250. So this is the number of pulses that we need to get a period of 10 microseconds. So with this, we establish the period of our signal. And then with these other functions, we select the on time. So we are giving here the level at which the output of the PWN signal is going to change. In this case for the channel A, so we are selecting a duty cycle of 0 0.9. And for the channel B, we are using the period divided by 3, so this is a duty cycle of 1 third. Here we are enabling the output. And then, in this case, we are not doing anything, so we are just waiting here in the program. So, at these two outputs, we are going to see the PWN signals. And here we have the outputs on the scope. So, this is the output of GP0. So, we can see that the UT cycle is 0 0.9 and this is GP1 so we can also see how the duty cycle is one third. Here we have the measurement for the channel number one here so is as we can see 100 kilohertz 
a 90% duty cycle. So we can see that in 10 microseconds we have 1250 steps to change the duty cycle. So this is 8 nanoseconds. Each unit is 8 nanoseconds. So this represents 0.08%, which is a very good accuracy to generate the duty cycle. Here we have some information related to the analog to digital converter. It's based on a successive approximation register. It can get up to 500 kilo samples per second using the internal 48 MHz clock, which is the default clock for the converter, and it has a resolution of 12 bit. It has five inputs, four inputs that come from the pins of the board and one input which is dedicated to an internal temperature sensor. So we can see here the inputs, the signal corresponding to the temperature sensor. This is a multiplexer and then the output of the multiplexer goes to the analog to digital converter. We can get more information in the data sheet in section 4.9. We have all the information related to the ADC module. Here we have some more information related to the internal operation of the ADC. So we have here the five inputs the sample and hole block, then we have the SAR controller, the digital to analog converter, and the comparator is the typical structure of this type of analog to digital converters. So operating at 48 MHz, we get a conversion time of 2 microseconds, which is very good, is 500 kilo samples per second. To program the ADC, we need to know also the functions that we have available. So in this document, Pico C++ SDK, section 411, we have the hardware ADC. And in this section, we can consult the information of all the functions. We have here some of them. Today, we are going to use only this one, the initialization, the selection of the input, and the reading of a value at the analog input. And here we have an example to program the ADC. We are going to use the input GP26. So we can connect a potentiometer to introduce an analog voltage here between 0 and 3.3 volts. And then what we are doing is to compare this input with a limit so if the voltage of the analog input is higher than this limit, then we turn on the onboard LED. And if the voltage is below the limit, then we turn off the LED. So here we have how to do this. This is the initialization of the LED. We saw this in a previous video. Here we are initializing the ADC. We initialize the input 26, so it's going to be high impedance. Here we select this input, this pin, the input number 0 for the ADC converter to read the value. And then here we are doing a loop in which our limit is 1.8 volts. So now we are reading the value of the analog input. Here we are comparing. So if the value is higher, then we turn on the LED. And if it is below the limit, then we turn off the LED. For this, we have obtained here the corresponding value. So we are measuring the result here of the ADC converter is 12 bits, so the value is going to be between 0 and 4096. So we are converting here to the corresponding value in this range and do the comparison. We wait 250 milliseconds and we start again. And here we have a more complete example, more similar to what we are going to do when controlling a DC-DC converter. So what we are doing here is to measure the analog signal 
which is between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts and generating a PWM output of 100 kilohertz and with a duty cycle which is proportional to the analog signal. So here we have the program. We are setting up the LED pin, the ADC converter, the PWM module as we have just seen. And then in this loop, we read the value of the analog signal and then we set the duty cycle proportional to the analog value. The analog value is going to be between 0 and 4096. So we divide the result by 4096 and multiply by the period to get the value of the duty cycle. We wait for 100 milliseconds and then we go again to generate the next value of the duty cycle. And here we have some results from this program. This is for an analog input of 1 volt. So this is the output that we get. And the frequency is 100 kilohertz and the duty cycle is something like 31%. In this case is for 2 volts. So we have again 100 kilohertz, 61% of duty cycle and finally for 3 volts we get 91.5% of duty cycle so it seems that everything is okay and we can use now this hardware to implement a digitally controlled DC-DC converter. If you want to save time you can go to my repository this is the link and then there you can download a copy of all the programs that we have seen today. Well, this is the end of this presentation. I hope that you find this information useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.